At JARS, our maintenance training team provides professional training to our partnering organizations, supporting Bible translation and church planning worldwide. We do whatever is needed to prepare these men and women to serve. In the unlikely event that we do have an accident overseas, we want our mechanics to have thought through some of the processes that they might have to go through to recover, to inspect an aircraft. We've built a gate so that we can access the back 500 acres, and we've brought the 206 over here, and we're going to simulate an aircraft accident. Cool. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Most of us have experienced some sort of event like this where Last minute, we get a phone call saying there's been an accident and we need you to go get the plane. Our maintenance specialists have never experienced anything like that, so this will be a great opportunity for them to come in and prepare themselves for things they will experience overseas. Right now, the guys have no idea what's coming. They're going to show up to work and we'll let them know that there's been an accident. The guys will come out and have to inspect it, interview witnesses, and eventually uh, fix it good enough to fly it back home. And we saw you guys take off and then you went way over that way. I don't know how I managed to get around the trees, but my, my wheel hit and, it, and um, it hit hard at an angle. We have four main discrepancies here. Cracked prop, an engine that is unairworthy as it is, um, a left hand main tire that's flat, and a hole in the right hand tail cone. You will be going out tomorrow morning at 5 o'clock and spending the next four days out there fixing the airplane. Yep. Each one of us made a list of tools and between the three of us I think we came up with a good list of tools but my list, um, Evan's list and Taiwan's list all were missing things that the other guys had. So far we've had everything we've needed so it's a good day. So when we got here the plane was just nosed into the trees uh, had some branches falling on top of it and all around the tail. Um, it was pretty, pretty messy. There's just a lot of little details that can fall through the cracks if you're not taking the time to plan because once you're out in the remote environment, you have the tools and the, the parts and everything that you brought. You know, you never want an accident, but uh, this type of work as a mechanic is so exciting. And I love getting out of the hangar. I love being able to go out into the bush. We had to kind of dig and poke around to make sure that we saw all the parts of the airplane that we were concerned about uh, in the simulated accident, which is what we'll be doing if we have an airplane that goes off a runway into trees. At JARS, you get to see a lot of different ways um, that Bible translation is made possible through transportation. Somewhere it might take three or four days to hike to, we can fly to in 15 minutes. The classroom uh, has been phenomenal. I mean, it's been, in my opinion, some world-class training. But to be able to be in the classroom and then down in the hangar and then now out here connects all of that together. Because sometimes you can sit in a classroom for hours at a day and then you go out to the airplane and it's like your hands don't know what to do because you've been working a different part of your brain. So to have all of that together has been so valuable for me. One of the things we've recognized in the world of missions is the need to prepare our maintenance people so when they arrive at the field, they're feeling confident and sure about the work they're doing. The Lord has blessed us with this runnable PT-6 engine maintenance stand. We can let them start the engine and uh, then we also put a few little bugs in it along the way and let them figure out what's going on with that, kind of help them build on some of the things they've learned the week before in the, in the theory class. We have a, a tremendous responsibility preparing maintenance technicians for the field. Loose one pot. Without maintenance technicians that are reliable, that understand the systems and airplanes that they're working with, the flyers can't fly. 
the complexity of the different programs they're going to and challenges they'll face with that are very unique. Instead of just reading about it, studying in the classroom, they'll leave here being able to say that I've actually done it, I know I can do it, and have the confidence that in the future they can do it unsupervised. Uh, one of my favorite parts of the equipping process that we go through is informing guys that, yeah, you're a mechanic, but you're God's mechanic. The edges of the map are starting to get colored in, but aviation and helicopters are still the way that we can reach out to the very last of the language groups that still need the gospel. We have to have mechanics that love Jesus, that want to be serving Him, that want to see people grow, want to see churches planted. Master's off.